Hey, this is Miracle Max. Welcome to Rise of Kingdoms. And if you guys saw the recent update pop and you saw this big section in there called Silk Road Speculators, well, unless you're in one of the first few kingdoms when the update dropped, you did not see anything change. And uh, when I hopped on Kingdom 3, I was very excited to see this event had shown up. So this is a three-day event. And uh, Silk Road refers to the original trade routes. Um, if you go back in history, um, trade routes from China and India through to Northern Africa into the Mediterranean Sea, which led to Europe. Uh, but this was the main passageway for trade going back and forth. Obviously, silk was a big item on it. So anyway, all that said. All right, if we look at this screen, Part of me goes, this kind of reminds me of Carrick and the Kerouac ceremony, but this works a little differently. So let's see how this item works and talk our way through it. All right, Silk Road Speculators, event rules. During this event, Alliance leaders and rank four officers can select a difficulty. You have to start with easy, uh, just like in Kerouac, um, but then you can move on. So they select a difficulty and dispatch an Alliance caravan. Um, the Alliance caravan is going to start at Shore Fortress just so you know, um, and then head in some unknown direction to uh, another structure. All right, Alliance credits will be expended each time an Alliance Caravan is dispatched. Um, you have to have a passing score on all prior difficulty levels before you can complete the next one. Um, event rewards increase with difficulty level. So there's this caravan and it's going to leave your Alliance Center and it's going to head to another destination and as it goes special barbarian troops are going to appear and attack it. Um, your job is to, is to escort it with the highest percentage of goods still in it. So Alliance members defeat all barbarian troops. Um, once it's escorted to its destination all Alliance members will receive event rewards for, via mail. The higher percentage the greater the rewards. Um, there's a limit to how many times you can do this a day. It is three. An escort chance is expended every time you attempt it, or I'm sorry, each time you're successful. An escort chance will be expended each time the Alliance successfully escorts a caravan to its destination. So good to know. If you fail, you didn't use one of your three shots per day. Once daily limit has been reached, an unlimited number of training caravans may be dispatched. You want to practice? Practice all you want. No rewards will be received from escorting training caravans, but scores achieved during training will count toward the Alliance high score, and thus can be used to unlock higher difficulties and increase Alliance event ranking. Very interesting there, and we'll get back to that. So daily escort chances reset at daily reset. Alliances will be ranked by their highest difficulty level completed and then by their highest score achieved and then rewards are given. Okay, so let's look at these rewards. So right now we're in third place and that was with an 89.14% on our first attempt. Looks like uh, this must be by kingdom and not by the entire eight kingdoms. So this is how my alliance ranks in compared to the other alliances in my kingdom. So this is a kingdom event, not a lost kingdom event. Rewards, epic sculptures. Now, I will say this, um, we're reaching a point in the game where for a lot of people, epic sculptures are becoming less and less important. I know on my main account, I think I have two or three commanders with one skill left to max. Um, so I'm going to be hoping for legendary sculptures soon. But right now, here we go. This is for the Alliance, so for all members in the Alliance. We have 20, 15, 10, and then 8, and dropping down to 5. So 20 Alliances per Kingdom are going to get some rewards here. So those are the end of the event rewards. And let's look at the rewards for completing. So these are the rewards for completing an easy level. Um, and we, like I said, we got 89%. And these are the rewards we got. So decent rewards. It takes about 25 minutes to escort your caravan across the map. And we'll go ahead and watch what that looks like so that you can see. And let me just show you some um, battle reports. 
before that. Sorry, I paused talking again. Okay, so here they are. There's two types of units that you're going to face on the battlefield. An Obiera, Oberia. Um, It wasn't difficult. Again, we're hunting them in packs and you'll be able to see that, but that's the one kind. And then we have one that is a little more difficult right here, the Athicat. So let's just go into the video. Um, I recorded this earlier while we were doing the caravan. I wasn't in a place where I could talk, so I recorded it knowing that I could come back and play it and talk my way through it. So let me switch screens real quick hop in here. Sorry, you're going to see pictures of my cats. Um, this is just how I live. We'll uh, fast forward a little bit and get you to the action. All right, so here we are. This is our center fortress, and shortly we're going to see this uh, caravan hop out of it. You see a lot of units, and as we as we did through went through this first run, I'll say you know we had no idea what to expect. We didn't know where the caravan was going. We didn't know how fast it was going to move. Um, we didn't know how quickly barbs would show up. So we didn't have any plan whatsoever going in, other than um, hey, everybody, be ready to escort this thing. So let me see if I can get us a little further. All right, here we go. So here comes the caravan popping out, and it moves really, really slowly. And I think now, looking back, I might have set up a diamond formation, a group of players at the lead, a group to the left, a group to the right, and then a group behind. We did see that barbarians did pop up on all four sides as we move through. Um, at the beginning of the journey, there weren't very many. And then towards the end, we started seeing a whole bunch at the same time. Um, plus, we saw the difficulty level uh, go up. If you look at this, this tells us we're still at 100% of our goods. Um, I think it's funny that he says already, I've got a bad feeling about this. Um, and so, again, a very slow march. We had no idea uh, what its pathing would be. We could see a gold line that led us a little bit. Um, but even when we scrolled out, the gold line fades away pretty quickly. Um, so I brought two armies to this battle. I brought a all cavalry unit uh, with Minamoto and Genghis Khan. I'm trying to uh, XP up my Genghis Khan, so I figured he could come on this journey. But I wanted one unit. Here comes the barbs. Um, I wanted one unit that could move a little faster, and I also wanted a tanky unit. Um, because I didn't know how difficult they would be. Um, I wanted to make sure I had both options available. They did not seem to be too, too difficult to defeat. Um, when they do appear on the map, you're going to see a red line that goes to the caravan. So that just shows us where they are. Um, but really, that first, that first round wasn't that difficult at all. Um, you know, three or four armies, I, I would say, you know, maybe around that same level 25 barbs. They don't fall right away, but, but they do, they do die out pretty quick when you surround them. Um, <clears throat> like I said, this is a 25 minute slow <laughs> roll. Um, so if you're thinking about how fast do my commanders need to be, you don't need cavalry for this. Um, if you see how fast that uh, caravan is moving, you know, I think siege machines could outpace it. I'm not saying bring siege machines, um, but I'm just saying that you don't need speed units on the battlefield for this. Um, you just need to be on top of it. And again, whether it's a diamond formation, some formation I think is necessary. Um, and I'm going to slow down my talking as we walk through this, you know. Uh, all we're doing is just following this at a slow roll, and it's it's not very exciting to watch back. But hey, for you guys, this is your first time through. Uh, we probably have about 30 armies out on the field um, following this thing around. Um, 
I think it was funny. Uh, there's a couple times during this that some people got bored and started hitting some barbs off to the side because, you know, it just, uh, it was a slow roll. And this ended up going to uh, a stone pit. There we go. Here comes some more popping up. Um, but really, at the beginning, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like, hitting us at the same time. But they fall really fast. Um, the lower level ones just, just, they're there to just annoy you. And we didn't lose any um, goods on these lower level ones. It wasn't until the very end when we had the higher level ones plus just a swarm of the lower level ones um, that kind of took us by surprise and we lost a little bit of our percentage. Um, but small amounts of organization and, and at least at the easy level it's a hundred percent. You know obviously just like Act, there's several levels to go through and to move up. Um, and we want to move up as fast as we can. If you look there, we're still at 100%. Um, we haven't taken any damage. And we're just going to slow roll around the map. Um, I'm trying to think other questions I can answer on this. So three chances per day, three successful runs a day. Um, any officer or R4 can start this. There is a cost to your alliance credits. Um, the rewards seem pretty decent and I really like that this is going to be a recurring event um, like Kerouac that we can just play at different times just something different to do to band the alliance together to get everybody on um, as a group playing so here you see some barbs being killed um, just because you know you gotta do something more when you're out on this map walking around um, so three times a day, as many training runs as you as you want, and training runs um, do count for percentage of difficulty, um, but you just don't get rewards for them. So we have one red line coming in. Not sure what troop it is, because I, at this point, okay. So here's here's my honest um, what was happening right now. One of my cats carried in a mouse and it was an alive mouse there you go that's the higher difficulty and so I was trying to deal with my cat and his toy uh, and so there are moments where it may not seem that I'm following the action and that's because I was following the literal live action in my house um, I have three cats I love them they're my kids and sometimes they do things that can drive me a little bit batty so while this slow roll of this caravan may seem annoying to you at this moment right here I was really happy that it was moving at a slow pace so I could uh, try and encourage my cat to take his friend uh, back outside and uh, again that's that's the weird thing of my life so as we're watching this roll I gotta give a shout out to Brayden TCT he is a fellow youtuber and I also um, tutor him so today we studied for his last final, which he will take tomorrow, and then he can be on playing constantly. Um, that's Brayden, B-R-A-Y-D-E-N-T-C-T. -T. And um, he is making YouTube videos on this game too, Rise of Kingdoms. So um, check him out. He's got uh, several videos out. All right, looks like I got tired of the lag and just wanted you to be able to see see the troops um, this video is killing me. Okay, here we go again. So we're back to, it looks like, the regular level of barbarians. Um, I think the other hard thing as you're going through this for the first time is since you have no idea where he's walking, um, you have no idea how long he's going to be walking, and <clears throat> 25 minutes is a very, very long walk that's how long this video lasted that I recorded so right about 25 minutes as the timeline to expect for this um, his pace doesn't change um, based on barbarians appearing or not being on the map it just continues at a slow roll um, we still look like we're at a hundred percent nothing's really gotten near 
near the caravan yet, but I think we got a little lazy at one point because it seemed so easy. And really at this point it was. Um, and that's why we lost the percent we did. <laughs> Not sure why the caravan just spun around, but it felt like it. So we're going to let it do that. And I just kept slowly inching my troops forward. And thankfully, you know, the game lets us drag and drop our troops now. So that makes this much easier uh, than the old way used to be. Um, again, I am doing this with a infantry, Lohar, and Richard. And then I have cavalry with uh, Minamoto and Genghis Khan. Um, like I said, I'm trying to level up my Genghis Khan. I think right now he's a 5-2 or a 5-3. I would have to double check that. Um, but just trying to get some XP on him. And since I didn't know how difficult um, the barbarians we were facing would be, I wanted to make sure I brought a good nuker and also a good tanker onto the battlefield. And when I use the word nuker, um, for those of you who were not playing the game the first three months, here we go. Here's a lot of action, a lot of lines coming in. I'll get back to nuker in just a minute. I think this is when we started taking damage. Um, we just had gotten a little bit too spread out and we had no organization as far as who was going to hit left, right, um, back and front. So the red lines really started to uh, to come in on us hard at different points in this. And you can still see we've got three red lines up. That one's down. Oh, it looks like we're okay here. Another one up there. Anyway, when you hear the word nuker, um, the skill commanders used to be called nukers. That was their original name before the Talent Tree 2.0 upgrade. And at that point, uh, the name nuker became skill. Um, but nuker we still use to refer to commanders that have an insanely powerful first skill where their rage skill does a lot of damage, um, kind of like a nuke bomb, and that was its old name. I'm just spewing random facts. I want you guys to see this whole video. I mean, this is the first time that it's been available, and I want to make sure that you get to see the entire long, slow march that we had to go through um, but fun it's always fun to do something new in this game and I know everybody at this point is about to enter the Lost Kingdom unless they are in an alliance that hasn't captured the Lost Temple yet or I'm sorry in a kingdom that hasn't but for all of us who the Lost Temple happened you know quite a bit ago um, we are all in the Eve of the Crusade at a minimum. You might already be on your second day in the Lost Kingdom, or if you're in the first eight ones, first eight kingdoms, then you're, you've been on the Lost Kingdom map for almost three weeks now, it seems. Um, but exciting to have new things to do. Excited always when the game brings new features. Oh, and while we're out here on the map, let me talk about something. I saw some people who were really surprised that the resource node um, started having quite a bit more resources in it. And about two days before the upgrade, there's the big one. Um, about two days before this last upgrade, Lilith sent out an email that said, hey, we've noticed that you know, there's just not enough resources on the field. There are so many active people playing, so we are going to double the capacity in all the Alliance nodes as of the next update. And so if you did not see that email, um, I know Lilith's emails tend to be long, and a lot of times we just jump through them and ignore them. But if you didn't see that email, that's what happened. So every Alliance node is now double what it used to be. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, that means that when we get into the Alliance nodes, and I can show you on the map here, up to levels 8 and 9 on the Alliance mode, there's actually going to be 2 million uh, food and wood in some of these Alliance nodes. And that is, is quite a huge difference when five, you know, 500,000 was the most we were used to seeing. And, you know, a level 6 is now just over a million. But to get up to 2 million sending out gatherers once, that, that's a great...
great change. I really appreciate that. Um, folks need the resources. We're all pushing to upgrade stuff right now to be strong for the Lost Kingdom. And so, um, good, good job, Lilith. We love it. I speak for me and my cat, so we are a we. All right. I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> I'm looking to figure out where is this guy going? You know, is there anything out here that tells me where we're going to land? And there is there's no information. And truthfully, I don't know how much further we have to go on this. It looks like we still have quite a bit. So here we go. Another hammering. Lots of groups. One, two, three. So it looks like about eight is the standard number that are appearing at a time. Um, but right now, if you look towards the front, we've got two different levels of barbarians that with the green badge and the white badge, and this is where our caravan starts to take some damage because there's four barbs up there, and we don't have enough troops to kill all of those. So we got caught um, too far behind the caravan, too many people in the behind and not enough in front, and we had to pay for it a little bit here. Um, it also can be hard sometimes to select that barb when there's so many armies on the field. Um, so there we go. That was, yeah, that's where we took the damage, went down to 90.82%. Um, so we should be coming up on the end here. But yeah, just an interesting little march. Um, curious to see once we get up to difficulty levels, medium, hard, and I'll have to go back and see how many levels there are again. Um, but how much healthier those barbarians are that attack us uh, and see if the quantity that attack us goes up from that eight at a time and um, just see how many levels there are of these guys to attack us. You know, we've now seen... Three for sure, two levels of barbarians, and then one that looks more like a guardian. Um, but I'm sure, just like in Kerouac, where, oh, here we go again. So we've got the white ones and the green ones coming in. And I know we take a little more damage this time, um, but it looks like we're doing a little bit better. So you let me know. You've seen how this works. How would you set up your troops? How many groups would you have marching? How many armies in each group? Um, and, you know, would you use a diamond formation? Would you, uh, you know, have five or six groups going around? Um, what do you think would work best? And like I said, at this point, um, you don't really need speed that much. You don't really need a tank that much. I think any... Any armies um, other than siege will work. Um, this is probably 95% T4s out on the field. We might have a few T3s or a few T5s, but probably almost all T4s, and we're making quick work of it. I'm hoping that stone resource pit is coming up because this is a lot of marching. They could probably shorten this just a little bit. It'll make it a 15-minute journey instead of a 25-minute journey. Um, it just seems like a lot of time to follow this guy around. Come on, caravan. Get to the end. And I don't think I had to do really any healing at all in this. You know, that my troop losses, I think, were under 300 severely wounded for all of these different battles. So really, really inexpensive to me. Um, decent rewards. Like I said, you know, I would love to see the rewards become more legendaries and less epic. Um, there it is. There is our stone pit. That is the final resting place for this. So I don't know if it does a distance calculation to find something that's an approximate distance away. Um, you know, the math behind that and what the plan is, I'm not sure. And here we go. Here's the big kahuna here at the end. All right, so we're going to get hit from the front. 
So we're seeing three levels, the guardian type looking machine and then the white and the green. Looks like the white is the baby. Green is would be level two and orange would be the level three. For some reason right now, our caravan is parked off to, to this side and there is, we've got a white guy sneaking up behind it. So the caravan, two, two white badged barbs sneaking up behind it. Um, and apparently none of us see them. Oh, here goes the caravan moving again, but it is taking a little bit of damage. And there we come in. So again, we got caught all out front. Um, everybody run into the action and not paying attention to the rear. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sad with our first attempt, 89% out of 100, um, with no preconceived ideas of how this was going to work. You know, you, you saw what we had to read before we started the attack. Um, so we didn't have much information to go on. Um, so I'm happy that we were successful. I'm happy we had this many people show up. Um, and I think with some um, just minimal amount of planning, you know, 100% is very, very doable. So we're going to get a little victory here in a second. And then we will cut back to live and end this video. All right, there he goes, caravan. Hop on in, bud. Yay, victory! The crowd goes wild. A little bit of fireworks. All right. Back into the game live. So, okay, so that is the Silken Road, the Silk Road Speculators. Um, and again, I don't believe it's in any kingdoms other than Kingdom 1 through 8 in the Lost Kingdom. Um, I haven't seen anybody else with it yet or heard from anyone else that they have it. So same five levels that we're used to seeing in Kerouac. Um, again, I'm hoping the rewards go up. You saw what the easy rewards were um, for completing it. And I'll show you that one more time. Just so you can see what it is. So oh, four, four and a half hours of speed ups, a gold key, a silver key, a few minor things, 200 gems um but hey fun times um and now we get to go to the drawing board and play around with a little bit and make a plan all right thanks for watching this i know it was a long video i know i um, struggled for content of what to talk about as we watch this thing walk slowly across the field but if you made it to the end i appreciate you watching if you didn't i totally understand um if you like the video, please leave a like. If you have questions on this, leave a comment, and I'll be glad to answer it. Um, research the info if I don't know it, or just let you know I'm still looking for it. Um, I appreciate it if you are watching these videos regularly. If you would subscribe, that helps me out a lot. Um, I'm nearing 500. That's my, my first goal as a YouTuber is to hit 500, and then, of course, you know the next goal will be 1,000. But we'll talk about that later. Um, I always appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to me and to watch my content. All right, you have a great day. Thanks.